Hello and welcome back to Tinker Talks Guns. Today we are talking about the Makarov, the Soviet service pistol from 1951 up until nominally 1991, but they're frankly still in use in a lot of places today. So let's talk about that. But before we do, I'd like to shout out to my Patreon supporters. Everything costs money, ammunition, gun parts, guns, reloading supplies, and your contributions help more than you know. If you'd like to join my supporters on Patreon, there's a link in the description below. I'd also like to thank channel benefactors who do things like provide me with ammunition for videos, um, allow me the use of their guns to show you and talk about them, allow me the use of their facilities, and uh, these businesses are not sponsors, but they're just nice people who help. And a lot of nice individuals who help as well, so thank you all. So the Makarov. In the wake of World War II, the Soviet Union realized that Tokarev's, their standard service pistol, were moderately expensive to produce and sometimes a bit fussy and they had issues like the lack of a manual safety and the uh, unfortunate tendency when in the hands of untrained troops to drop the magazine when gripping the pistol because the magazine release was located in the normal place. So they wanted to address a number of these concerns. It also occurred to them that military service pistols aren't actually very important. Um, they get surprisingly little use and are often not that useful. So, um, two of the things with the Makarov, if you just, or with the Tokarev, you drop the magazine, load another one, and go. Which means that magazine will probably never be seen again in battlefield conditions. So they wanted to go a more European route with a more foolproof, magazine release by placing it on the heel, which also theoretically will encourage your soldiers to retain their magazines because you want them to. Um, so they came up with a number of designs and the winner was the Makarov. And um, it's a good pistol. It is chambered in the 9 by 18 millimeter cartridge, which is actually 9.2 by 18, approximately. Um, there are a number of speculations about why they went with a 9.2 millimeter, and one of them was so that their ammunition would not be compatible with Western firearms. Another speculation is that it made them harder to, for soldiers to sell their ammo on the black market. I don't really think either of those was necessary or even worked. So basically they wanted a more robust, less expensive to produce and more foolproof pistol with a manual safety and the heel magazine release. Well, straight blowback is about as simple as it gets and it offers good potential for accuracy because the barrel is fixed and if your slide is even moderately tight, you know, you're going to produce acceptable accuracy for its uses. And the 9x18 Makarov fires a nominally a 95 grain bullet at 1,050 feet per second, which puts it pretty much right between the 380 ACP of the time and 9mm Parabellum. And it allows you to use a blowback without the gun becoming heavier than you would prefer. It's also relatively compact. And even though it has an all steel frame, it's a good chunk by modern standards, but by the time it was not at all heavy. And uh, they incorporated a number of clever features. Basically, this is a modified design of the Walther PP, um, rationalized to make it easier to operate and most importantly, less expensive to produce. So let's have a look at some of its features on the tabletop. The owner of this Makarov has the original issue style holster, and this is a Bulgarian Makarov. I don't know if this is different than the standard issue Soviet holster. 
but I suspect it's pretty close, if not exact. And as you can see, it completely encloses the gun, which makes a certain amount of sense because they have some rather nasty weather in Northern Europe, come kind of winter time. So the gun is very well protected. As you can see, there is a cleaning rod slash multi-tool, which is retained by the flap of the holster. It has this little gizmo here that I have no idea what it's for. Perhaps someone can inform me in the comments. So when you open the pistol, it's not necessarily that easy to fish out, especially if you're wearing winter gloves. So this handy tab is in place and you pull that and it lifts the gun to where you can grip it more easily. The holster contains not only this cunning lifting strap, but it also has a spare magazine, which holds eight rounds. So the capacity is eight plus one. And this, again, another multi-tool. So basically the soldier in the field can take the gun completely apart in service of losing parts because that's what you want to do. So, eject the magazine, you have the heel magazine release. It's not the fastest, but it is pretty foolproof and soldiers can be fools. And again, it encourages you to retain the magazine and save money and maybe be able to use it again. The controls are relatively simple. There is of course a hammer which is cocked when the gun fires, or it can be cocked by the trigger, double action fan. But it's commendably smooth in this example. And I have to say, I have handled a lot of Makarovs, and while the triggers are never light, I've never handled one where it was actually awful, just long and heavy, as you kind of want a double action first shot to be. The sights are acceptable. Square notch rear, little post front. They're not obtrusive and they are big enough to be useful. Not much by modern standards, but for a service pistol in 1951, they're actually pretty good. Now, the gun has a hammer drop safety. So when you charge the pistol, chambering around, push the safety up, and it drops the hammer to a safe position, disables the trigger, doesn't allow you to cock the hammer or operate the slide. And yet, contrary to most European pistols, they very sensibly have the off safe position down. So it's very easy to sweep that down with your thumb and move right into a firing grip. It has a slide lock. It does lock open on empty. And the slide lock rather cunningly also incorporates the ejector, which makes it quite a bit simpler to manufacture. Uh, this has a thumb shelf. I don't know if that was standard on issued pistols or if it's something that was put on for import to the U.S. because Gun Control Act of 1968's point system. Who knows? One of you does, I would reckon, and can probably tell me in the comments. So please do that. And uh, I, n I have neglected Makarovs because um, it used to be they ate my hand with the slide. And that's unpleasant, so I eschewed them. Uh, now I find that it doesn't, which is rather nice. Opens up a whole new bunch of guns that I don't need that I can now delve into. Uh, takedown is basically identical to the Walther PP. Remove the magazine, pull down the trigger guard and push it to the side. Make sure the safety's off. Pull the slide to the rear and lift it off. And you are field stripped for maintenance. And here you can see the ejector attached to the stamped sheet metal slide release. Very clever, it's a good addition to the gun. Makes a lot of sense. Spring is concentric around the barrel. And uh, 
It's all rather made to be rather simple and easy to produce. And I'm saying rather far too many times. I'd rather not do that. Putting it back together is very simple. Just put the slide on. All the way on. Drop the slide, let the trigger guard go back. And this extension on the top of the trigger guard prevents the slide from going back far enough to lift it off the back of the gun. Pretty simple. Uh, the grip is pretty ergonomic and comfortable. And recoil is manageable. Um, some people find them a little snappy in 9 by 18 but um, it doesn't bother me because I'm a gorilla. And uh, overall, while the finish varies, typically these are good quality handguns. The Makarov proved to be a solid, reliable service pistol and was, in fact, as mentioned, in service for decades. And, um, you know, there isn't really a good reason to replace it, but the world is moving on, technology is moving on, and 9x19mm has come to dominate for very good reasons. It's a great service cartridge, and eventually even Russia had to bow to the inevitable and switch to 9x19mm. And now these remain a high quality pistol. Um, the caliber is reasonably effective. And 8 plus 1 capacity isn't bad compared to modern pistols. It's heavy. But really these days it's more of a curiosity than a practical firearm here in America because 9x18 isn't always easy to come by, and while there is jacketed hollow point ammunition available, um, you're probably going to have to order it online. But it's a good, solid pistol. I know a number of people who rely on these as their primary self-defense weapon. Even though it's somewhat heavy, it's relatively compact, and that's pretty easy to mitigate with a good gun belt and holster. So, we're likely to be seeing Makarovs around for quite a while yet. They made, Lord knows, they made a bloody lot of them. And uh, it's a good gun. Now, the Russians' standard ammunition was a 95 grain bullet with a soft steel core. They also made armor piercing ammunition, sort of, with a hardened steel core. And they made a hybrid uh, plastic and lead cord hollow point ammunition for use by police and other special uses, and they made a low penetration version of that round as well. I know these got very broad use across police and military and intelligence agencies, and uh, over the decades they found a use for a wide variety of ammunition. Modern hollow points, jacket hollow points as stated, are available, and uh, while I haven't done any ballistics testing on them myself, pretty sure they probably were just fine. So, good solid gun, a lot of history there. A lot of it's not good history from our perspective, but there's a lot of history there, and it's just, now that they don't eat my hand, kind of like it. Anyway, so that's it for this time. Stay safe, take care, and we'll talk to you again real soon.